metalrules.com and join me today in San Antonio, Texas at the tour opener for his new album, Perpetual Flame, is none other than the undisputed king of the sixth string, the legendary Inde Monsi. How are you doing today? Hello. Perpetual Flame will be released on October 14th here in the United States, and with the awe-inspiring vocals of Ripper Owens joining forces with yourself, in my opinion, the greatest guitar player to ever live, and it promises to be one of your strongest efforts today. What would you like to tell your fans about the new album? Well, I think that it's very um, exciting, you know. I think that it all came together. I, it took a long time because I started writing the songs. It was a while ago. Then I went into the studio to record them with the live, the live drums. And then I went on tour. And I came back and hit some more guitars and bass and went on tour again. So it wasn't done start to finish. And as I was doing this, I, I started realizing, because I write the songs with the lyrics and everything. I, I write the whole thing, so I start hearing things in my head, which were, I need a new singer. So the singing I was before, I just, you know, died kind of like told me, you know, is it going to work? So I uh, walked out with Tim to try it out first, but uh, it turned out to be extremely good. I'm very happy. Yeah, yeah, I heard some songs off the new album, and wow, uh, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Really great vocals, killer guitar, especially on the uh, Capricci Di Diablo. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think uh, I think I might have uh, put a water over my head on that one. And you and Ripper had, <laughs> had worked uh, together before on a cover of Mr. Crowley for an Ozzy Osbourne tribute album. Did you guys keep in touch over the years? Well, just very, very like loosely, you know, because he's I was doing bits with my thing and he was doing his thing. And it just took, really worked out very well, you know, this whole. Stars aligned. And you, you worked with Roy Z on the new album who previously had produced for uh, Rob Halford and Bruce Dickinson. What was it like working with Roy Z? Well, he came in to mix, you know, because I engineered and produced the album from the beginning because I had the luxury of owning two studios so I just could do it whenever I wanted to. Yeah. And, um, I go in, I leave it if I don't want to do it, I come back whenever I want to. You know? So that's a very, very good thing for being creative. Um, but, but I've always found it very important for me to um, have a different set of ears when the mix comes. Not for the recording parts, okay. And um, it came in and it was really good. I liked it. We had a great time. It's awesome. Back in July, you landed the cover of Guitar World. And in the interview, uh, you disclosed that 39 songs had been recorded for Perpetual Flame yet only 12 make it onto the disc. What are you going to do with all that uh, unreleased material? They're going to come out to Maybe for the next album? Mm -hmm. Wow, I can't wait to hear that. Yep. So no, there's, 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 there's a bunch of more cool stuff. Well, you're all set to be inducted into the Hollywood Rock Walk next week. How does it feel to finally get your own star next to all the other musicians past and present? It's, it's pretty crazy, you know, because, uh, I mean, honestly, I haven't really reflected on too much yet because I've been so busy doing other things, you know, between traveling and interviews. I mean, doing interviews 24 7. You know? Yeah. And so, uh, very time consuming. And, um, I mean, the more, I mean, it's coming closer to us, so I bet it's going to hit me pretty soon. But I haven't really thought much about it yet. I mean, it's very humbling and very honoring, you know. But, um, and, you know, surreal. You know? Because I never thought, I never think of myself as, as that. Just do what I got to do. I have a very strong uh, focus on what I'm doing, yeah. actually, right now. And, um, you know, so it's great. Well, the folks at Fender have been slaving away, creating an eBay Monstein signature series guitar. Uh, what can you tell us about this guitar and how soon can fans expect to get their hands on one? Well, there's more than one. That is the on the on the, on the record there, uh, magazine there. That's the newest updated Malmsteen signature model, and that's great. You know. um, but they also did uh, a very short run of something called a tribute guitar, which is an exact replica of the the way that guitar looks now. That I've had it for many many years. It was actually guitar bought with me from Sweden. I was just a teenager. Did that. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, it's all got a rising force one. 
And that, that day, I mean, it's scary. It's mind-bending how good it is. It's, it's so exact that, in fact, I saw one the other day and I thought it was um, my original one, you know. Because I gave it to him and said, now did you give it to him, right? So here, you guys take it until you, you know, you got it right. Yeah. And so I thought that that's the one they sent me back or something, but it wasn't. And you also acted as a visiting professor last summer in Fender's, uh, Fender University. How was that experience for you? And given the, the time, would you like to do it again? Yeah, yeah I'll do it again. The, the, it was sort of like a clinic, because I do clinics now and again. But it was much better than that, because they really got there. That place is beautiful. And uh, it was very great, you know, I love it. I, no, I'll do it again for sure. What was like the curriculum like? Just talks about uh, most mostly showing, you know, but also disgusting things. Yeah, you know where you know they can go ask me questions, I can show examples. Then I say, okay, here's here's a piece that goes like they did it on a backing track, you know. And I play along with that. Are are you uh, in, in contact at all with any of your former singers anymore, or Julian Turner or Mark Bowles? Well, no, not per se, you know, but I just saw, I just saw Jessica Soto in London last month. Um, I played with Joe last year. Uh, I saw Mark and Mats. Came, they came to one thing I did in uh, California this year. You know, so I see, I see a lot of people <laughs> all the time, but I mean, it's not constant, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll take some questions now from the MiddleRules.com forum. Uh, Kill Traders from New Jersey would like to know, is the title of the new album, Perpetual Flame, at all influenced by Jason Becker? I guess he had one mm -hmm. called Perpetual Burn. No. No, I, I didn't even know that. Uh, no, there's, the, there's a meaning behind that title, which is, um, it's, it's, it's almost surreal when I think about it, you know. Because I'm doing this, I'm here, I'm doing this again. I'm doing the show again. I, I, it's like 25 years ago I was doing this. Yeah. And it doesn't feel, it, it, it feels like it was yesterday, you know. It's just, or, or it does feel like a long time. And, uh, what I can say is that it's got, got a really deep meaning about the name of the album means, basically, that it, it I mean, I came to the States a long, long time ago with a, with a, you know, sort of goal just not to have to work in a factory or something. That was it. Because one where I was from in Sweden, that it wasn't accepted to be a musician. That wasn't acceptable. You know, you had to have a, a real job. Yeah. If you do welding in a day, can we get played? No, no problem. That's okay. That's the, the, the mindset in Sweden in the 1970s when I grew up. Very um, not at all uh, free, you know, in, in the sense where you, you, they, they, they do encourage you to do things, things like that. So, you know, I didn't know that America was quite different. Yeah, I didn't know that. So when I came here, I was just kind of, oh, great, you know. And uh, this was so long ago, and it, my my way of doing things is not that different. Yeah, you had to line it up around the corner when you came over. And yeah, yeah, for the second show. Wow. The first show was 30 people. First show was 30 people opening up for a venues or something. Next weekend we played in Troubadour and I look in down the street and I see all those people outside. And I'm just like hearing the guitar, I've seen this lines of people and I say to someone, hey look at all those people, who's playing tonight? Yeah, and like, you are. That's, that was weird. Because I've been in the States for a week, or maybe two weeks. And in Sweden, I've done it forever and ever and ever and ever. Nothing happened. Well, I mean, you know, there was we we did pretty good gigs and stuff, but like nothing really, you know, because there wasn't any scene. Now Sweden's very good with stuff like that. You know, they have a lot of stuff going. on. Was that at all because like album was the big thing? No. Well, for me, you mean that? Uh, no, I think that was just it's just not the thing to do. You know, it, it it wasn't encouraged to be a professional athlete or a, a actor or nothing. No, no. no. That wasn't the thing to do. Quite, um, you know, stifling in a way. I never felt at home with that. You know, I was I was much more of an artist. You know, like my family, everybody in my family was also very artistic. So it was a different vibe. You know, yeah. it wasn't like be home and serve it for dinner. You know, it was whatever. Like, come on, yeah. I mean, all the real deep meaning of this title. 
Uh, next question is, uh, you, know, you said recently that you'll be remixing and re-releasing -re some of your older material through Coach, and that kind of paraphrases the next question from, Dulce, uh, from Dunstan in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who'd like to know, are there any plans to remaster the war to end all wars? No, not remaster, remix. Remix. The difference. Yes, I have planned to do that, yeah. Because I, I really like the songs on the album, uh, and it's just, the guy that did came in to engineer the record for some reason. It was the thing that he, he you know, kind of like made it more of an industri industrial kind of sound. And I never liked it too much, but you know, that's the way it happened. So, but the album per se is very good, I must say. I really think so. Yeah, I love it. And now we have Party from Escondido, California, who would like to know, will you ever release a follow-up to Concerto Suite? And is your original guitar, the Duck, still functional? Oh yeah. It's very functional guitar, very, very good. Uh, it's just very beaten up. No, no, it's, you plug it in, it screams. Um, as far as the classical stuff, I definitely want to do it. I want, I want to do more symphonic stuff, I want to do for movies and all that stuff. But right now, right now, as we speak, at this moment in time, I just want to turn up and rock. You know, I, when the time comes, I'll do more of that. And uh, one, one more question from MetalRules.com forum. Opus from Stockholm, Sweden, would like to ask, will you make room for your more bluesy side on your future releases? He needs to hear Magic City, huh? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right on, dude. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I, I never plan things out, per se, you know. It just happens the way it happens. And so, but I hear a lot of people asking that. There, there must be something they like about it. So. Yeah, I like your material the way it is. Yeah. Your album is killer. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. And I know you're a really busy guy. I can't wait to see you share tonight. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.